The human body is divided up into two main cavities. A cavity is a fluid filled space in the body that contains some of our organs. Our two main ones include the dorsal cavity, which contains our brain and our spinal cord, surrounded by the skull and the vertebrae, and the ventral cavity. The ventral cavity is gonna contain our heart and lungs and digestive organs and all of that. In this video, we're gonna to move to the whiteboard to see where those cavities are, and then we'll jump to the classroom and look at Terry the torso model and actually see those organs and where they all fit in in the body. So let's go. Let's start with an outline of the human body. We're gonna have two pictures here. We have a lateral view, which is here on the left, the lateral view will be a sagittal cross section, kind of as if you're viewing it from the side. If you need to review human body planes, check out my video on that. And our other view is an anterior view, as if we're looking from the front or a frontal plane of the body. Now there are two main cavities, the dorsal cavity, which we see drawn here, that's gonna contain the brain and the spinal cord. And then we have the ventral cavity, which is gonna contain all of those other body organs like the heart and the lungs and the stomach and the intestines and all of that. Both of those cavities, of course, are divided up into smaller subcavities. The first of those we'll look at is the cranial cavity, and that's contained within the skull and it contains just your brain. Just inferior to that, we have the spinal cavity, which contains your spinal cord. The spinal cord refers to the nerve tissue that conducts signals from your brain down to the rest of your body. Now that cavity is contained by the vertebrae in your spine, the bones of your spine, which protect the spinal cord. The ventral cavity is broken up into smaller subcavities as well. The most superior of those is called the thoracic cavity, and that's gonna contain your lungs and your heart and some other organs. And that thoracic cavity is divided up into subcavities as well. The first of those is the pleural cavities. The pleural cavities contain the lungs, and I remember the name pleural cavities by remembering that plural means more than one, and you've got two pleural cavities, or two lungs. Now the root here is a different root, so they're not really derived from exactly the same word, but I use it as a way to remember pleural cavities. There's two of them. Medial to the pleural cavities is the pericardial cavity. Para and cardial means around the heart. The heart's actually covered in a pericardial membrane, which divides this cavity from the other cavities. Just like the pleural cavities are divided from the rest of the thoracic cavity by pleural membranes, thin sheets of tissue that surround those organs. The rest of the thoracic cavity is called the mediastinum or mediastinum. The mediastinum technically contains both the pericardial cavity and the rest of this area in orange right here. And besides the heart, that's gonna contain the trachea, aorta, and esophagus. Just inferior to the thoracic cavity is the abdominal cavity. The abdominal cavity is gonna contain lots of organs like your stomach and digestive organs and all of that. And it's gonna be divided from the thoracic cavity by the diaphragm. The diaphragm will be located right in here between those two cavities. Finally, inferior to the abdominal cavity is the pelvic cavity. The pelvic cavity will contain the urinary organs and reproductive organs. A lot of times the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity are combined into one word and we just call it the abdomino-pelvic cavity. There's not really a, a clear line between the two. You know, like the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. There's not an actual tissue or membrane that separates the abdominal from the pelvic. So a lot of times we just combine it into one word and call it abdomino-pelvic, which is especially useful if you like to use long words to impress your friends. Ooh, I just have a abdominal-pelvic cavity ache today. Let's see what some of those organs look like now so we can get a better visual representation of them. Let's jump to the classroom. So I'm here at the school with my good friend, Terry, the torso model. Say hi, Terry. Get your eye loose there. Terry's gonna help us out with the cavities and just seeing what are all the organs that are in those cavities. The dorsal cavity just includes the brain right there inside of the skull and then the spinal cord, which goes down in there. We're gonna spend most of our time with the ventral cavity, including the thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic. So I'm gonna take these organs out and I'm gonna put them back in so you can get a good idea of what organs are in each cavity. Starting with the thoracic, we've got the lungs, which are in the pleural cavities of the thoracic cavity. In between the pleural cavities, we have the mediastinum. This whole area is the mediastinum and the heart is in part of the mediastinum called the pericardial cavity. But posterior to the heart, we have the trachea, that's where air goes in, and the esophagus and the aorta. The esophagus where food travels down and the aorta, which is one of the major blood vessels bringing blood away from the heart. And then the heart in front of that. So that's the thoracic cavity. Down below the thoracic cavity, still in the ventral cavity, is the abdominal cavity, or sometimes called the abdominal pelvic cavity if we're talking about both parts. The pelvic cavity is gonna include the urinary system as well as reproductive organs, such as the bladder, and here we've got the uterus and vagina, 
the colon. You can see here in the abdominal cavity that we've got the kidneys, a couple major blood vessels, the adrenal glands. Here we have the pancreas, the spleen. This is part of the small intestine. Here are the intestines. I'm going to put in small intestine, large intestine. We'll get into that more in the digestive system. Fun fact, did you know you have a little metal latch in your organs that uh, hold them all together? And then connected to the small intestine is the stomach, if I don't drop it, and the liver. Now the thoracic and the abdominal cavity are separated by this sheet called the diaphragm. It's connective tissue as well as some muscle and it's gonna help you breathe. So again, quick recap, thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic cavities, which are all part of the ventral cavity, and the dorsal cavity, which includes the brain and spinal cord, which are inside of the skull and the vertebrae of the spine. Say bye, Terry. Bye. You wanna review the cavities? We've got the cranial cavity and the spinal cavity. We've got the thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic cavities. You want to keep reviewing the cavities? Yeah, that's the camera.